late December 2007. A catastrophic failure. The 66-inch main was collapsed. Hyattsville police notify WSSC a huge sinkhole is swallowing a section of Magruder Park. The invert of the pipe uh, from 9 to 3 o'clock position uh, was completely uh, collapsed. The culprit, hydrogen sulfide. It's caused by the pipe not being full. When you have air pockets, it creates uh, H2S, hydrogen sulfide. You have the sewer and you have gas and it, the gas has nowhere to go. It has a vent pipe, but over a period of time, it starts eating away at the, at the, at the concrete pipe. But this is a classic example of what happens, of what happens if, you don't have, if you don't have the resources to have a, a proper maintenance program. In plotting a plan of attack, shoring up the area around the broken section of PCCP was paramount. If this thing would just uh, break loose and overflow, you're talking a catastrophic uh, event. Uh, you're about 300 feet away from a northwest branch. Average flow is, uh, you know, on a, on a low end is 20 million gallons to a high end of 47. We also have more flow going through this pipe than goes any, any one of our five treatment plants. The design and implementation of a fail-safe bypass was now crucial. The major challenge up front was to stop the line to set up the bypass, to bypass the flow around the collapse. We had no place to dump to except 2,000 feet downstream. The idea was to bypass uh, from one of our sleuth gates, which is a gate that controls the flow of the uh, sewer, uh, and then pump it from there to the junction chamber, which dumps into the 96-inch sewer main. The sluice gates posed a problem. They simply wouldn't work. By late winter, it was on to plan B, installing line stops, which are temporary valves. These are not easy uh, items to install. We've never done it on a sewer main, so it was, a, it was a new process for us. By July, the line stops are in, and five powerful pumps now run the massive maze of bypass. I'd imagine this is one of the, the, the larger line stops in this country. We have uh, four 18-inch uh, sections of pipe and they're approximately 2,000 feet uh, a piece. It's going from this part all the way over underneath the um, Rhode Island Avenue and uh, the CS CSX railroad tracks to uh, Junction Chamber uh, 2. With the bypass under our belt, the focus shifts to repairs, another monumental challenge. The reaction would be just to fix the collapsed portion. But we took another approach. We wanted to look at the entire pipe section to see if there's any other problem areas. A CCTV inspection of 2,000 feet of pipe in mid-July turned up severe corrosion throughout some 600 feet, much more than anyone expected. Only 155 feet of new PCCP had been ordered months earlier. Ordering pipe of this size is a long lead item. And they tell you 10 to 12 weeks. To complicate matters, early September brought Hurricane Hannah. Our pumps were rated at about 47 million gallons a day, and we didn't know if that could handle a full-blown hurricane. Not wanting to risk a sanitary sewer overflow, the line stops were pulled, pumps moved to higher ground, and the main went back into service. By late September, the main was shut down again and readied for repairs. With the structural integrity of such a large section of pipe compromised, coupled with the unusual design of the line, WSSC set up for the unique repair. It's not a typical gravity system. This is a low head pressure sewer. So um, whatever we decide to install out here has to be able to withstand the pressure. The open cut replacement would be followed by cutting edge technology. Aligning with our vision of becoming world class, WSSC is the first in the region to install SPR, Spiral Wound Pipe Renewal. It's developed in Japan, it's Japanese technology, Sakasui. We're building a pipe in a pipe. Utilities from as far as Seattle paid a visit to the site for a glimpse of our innovative repair. 800 feet of the 66 inch sewer main swiftly lined with the PVC profile. A winding machine pulls the strips of plastic into the pipe, locking them in place, making for an environmentally friendly, trenchless application. Once that's complete, we'll come back through with the internal brace frame system and we'll inject a 5,000 PSI cementitious grout between the old hose and the new liner, a corrosion barrier that will last them hundreds of years. A promising payoff for a tremendous project.
The bypass operation has been more than a million dollars. With a total price tag over the 10-month haul. Four million dollars. Contract manager uh, Robert Holt and uh, Mark Behe overseeing the repairs. I can't express in words, but I'm going to try that uh, they've done an exceptional and outstanding job, no, no question about it.